Dr. Sabhyasachi Datta, Consul General of USA, Japan and Australia, distinguished participants and friends. Namaskar and good morning. It gives me great pleasure to address this conclave on a theme of interest, namely to reimagine and reconnect Indo-Pacific synergies through the lens of culture. I would like to felicitate Dr. Sabhyasachi Datta, Executive Director of the Asian Conference for taking the initiative to host this important dialogue in collaboration with the US Consulate General in Kolkata. I have had the good fortune to work closely with the Asian Conference in Bangladesh on the successful Nadi Conference and later on important issues including India's Act East policy and the development of our Northeastern region. Over the years, the Asian Conference has emerged as a serious and capable organization with a growing body of work that highlights international connections with special domain knowledge and expertise on the northeastern part of our country. Its major initiatives such as the Third Space, Nadi, Young Scholars Forum, Bamboo Grove have come in for fulsome appreciation. For India, the Indo-Pacific is not a recent construct. It was the forces of nature, the monsoon winds, for instance, or our maritime and trading history that defined our area of familiarity and convergence. India's great religious traditions, such as Buddhism, spread far and wide in the Indo-Pacific. Some of the oldest and most impressive Hindu temples are found in Vietnam, remnants of the Cham Kingdom. A thousand years ago, maritime expeditions and trading ships from India's greatest coastal empire, the Cholas, voyaged as far east as Sumatra to ancient China, as well as to the Abbasid Empire in what is today Iraq. Another empire, the Pallavas, built a flourishing trade relationship with Southeast Asia. Maritime trade with Africa and with the Gulf states has been a constant of Indian economic life. These experiences are our past as much as they are our future. They determine our concept of the Indo-Pacific. In the 21st century, the interconnectedness of the Indo-Pacific is finally coming into full play. A major factor is the region's emergence as a driver of international trade and well-being. The Indo-Pacific ocean system carries an estimated 65% of world trade and contributes 60% of global GDP. 90% of India's international trade travels on its waters. For us, the rise of China and the imperative for a global rebalancing have added to the mix. A rules-based international order is achievable only with a rules-based Indo-Pacific. India's Indo-Pacific strategy was outlined by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi in a speech in Singapore in 2018 as the Sagar Doctrine. The word Sagar means ocean in Sanskrit and other Indian languages. The Prime Minister used it as an acronym for security and growth for all in the region. This aspiration depends on securing end-to-end -end supply chains in the region, avoiding disproportionate dependence on a single country and ensuring prosperity for all stakeholders. An Indo-Pacific, guided by norms and governed by rules, with freedom of navigation, open connectivity and respect for the territorial integrity and sovereignty of all states, is an article of faith for India. At the East Asia Summit in Bangkok in 2019, Prime Minister Modi took the idea of Sagar further and announced the Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative. Using this initiative, India plans to support the building of a rules-based regional architecture resting on seven pillars of maritime security, maritime ecology, maritime resources, capacity building and resource sharing, disaster risk reduction and management, science, technology and academic cooperation, and trade connectivity and maritime transport. India has established itself as an instinctive and unstinted early responder and a credible friend in the Indo-Pacific region. 
whether in response to an earthquake in Indonesia or to a cyclone in Mozambique, Indian assistance and an Indian ship have never been far away. In recent years, India has significantly enhanced its engagement in the region. The United States has stated that it views India as a vital partner in efforts to ensure that the Indo-Pacific is a region of peace, stability and growing prosperity and economic inclusion. India is working closely with its partners to help create and sustain a narrative of democracy, peace and stability in the region and beyond. The Quad, consisting of India, the United States of America, Australia and Japan, has been formed based on a common vision of the Indo-Pacific. There is an agreement on several common denominators that the region is one with great potential for trade, being naturally connected by shared waters, shared civilization and shared values of respecting sovereignty, trust and freedom for inclusive growth. The theme of the Kolkata Conclave on reimagining and reconnecting Indo-Pacific synergies through the lens of culture is very relevant for us. The shared culture, history and mutual social threads that tie the region with India is also an important component towards fostering regional cooperation. For example, the east and northeastern part of India comprise of a region that is a unique melting pot of diverse culture, language, dance forms and cuisine. India's cultural ties with Southeast Asia are historic and profound. In Cambodia or Laos, Thailand or Indonesia, Myanmar or Vietnam, the historical and living reminders of India's cultural influence are clearly visible in their art, culture, language and civilization. Indian religion, political thought, literature, mythology, artistic motifs and style were absorbed deeply into local culture as greater interaction with the courts of Southeast Asia took place. Buddhism came to Southeast Asia from India in the 3rd century BC when Buddhist monks were sent by the Emperor Ashok. In medieval times, from the 6th to the 14th century, there existed a great maritime empire based in the Indonesian islands of Java and Sumatra. Many Indian artisans came to work temporarily in the courts and were from Kalinga, which is modern-day Odisha. They helped in building great temples and monuments. Many of the motifs on the walls of Borobudur and Angkor Wat resemble carvings of Konarak and other medieval temples of Eastern India. The synergetic culture of Southeast Asia is evident in Buddhism, being practiced in Hindu temples in Cambodia, Muslim wedding rituals and dress in Malaysia, which are based on Hindu rituals and attire. Garud, the, the vehicle of Hindu god Vishnu, is the name of Indonesian airlines, and Naga and Kuber, which are prevalent in both Hindu and Buddhist cultures, can be seen carved in many places. A Mahabharata monument depicting Krishna and Arjun riding a chariot pulled by 11 horses is placed prominently in a park in central Jakarta. Southeast Asia absorbed and retained its past Indian influence in a very distinctive manner over the centuries and today it has melded into the Southeast Asian culture. In Indonesia's shadow play involving leather puppets with movable arms and legs on a screen narrating scenes from the Ramayana is very popular even today. It was also a popular, it is also a popular art form in Odisha. There was a reverse exchange of ideas and artistic techniques in the last century when Rabindranath Tagore travelled to Southeast Asia and brought the art of Batik from Indonesia to India and taught it to students in Shanti Niketan. The influence of India can also be felt in the food and flavours of Southeast Asia. There are many spices in common between Indian and Southeast Asian foods. Indian herbal medicines also reached Southeast Asia from ancient times and are used even today in many countries. Closer links with the Southeast Asian region is thus a natural outcome for India and its Act East policy. As in the past, India continues to engage closely with countries of this region in various spheres. One of them is the restoration of historic monuments such as the Ta Prom in Cambodia, Mi Son in Vietnam, Wat Phu in Laos and the Ananda Temple in Myanmar. In historical terms, India's heritage restoration footprint 
spans over 60 completed projects in 21 countries and 52 ongoing projects in 12 countries. The Kolkata conclave provides an opportunity for a comprehensive introspection of the Indo-Pacific, specifically from the point of view of shared cultural, historical and social threads. I am very happy to note that the conference brings together prominent academics and thinkers from different walks of life to provide us with an overview and perspective on the linkages that connect the Indo-Pacific through trade and connectivity, climate and ecology, and migration and peace building. I congratulate the Asian Confluence for taking this initiative and thank all participants of the conclave in advance for their unique and insightful. Thank you. Namaskar.